ITSM 17 and we've been talking quite a lot today about Siam and I'm I hesitate to say delighted but I am delighted to be talking to Dr. Martin Goebel. Why thank you Barkley, that's very kind. Yes and um, you are one of those people who actually does Siam um, and quite interested in just what your perspective of what it really is in practical terms. I mean if, if, if I was a CIO thinking about do, doing it or being asked to do it, what would you be saying to me that I, sh you know, why, why am I doing it or what should I be thinking about? Well, I mean, that, that is absolutely a question. Why am I doing it? So what am I trying to achieve by putting in service integration and management? How, what, is the ch what are the challenges I'm facing and how do I think this is going to solve those challenges for me? So as the CIO, I ought to be thinking, okay, I've got a problem coordinating my vendors. I'm not perhaps getting the value that I think I should be getting or each of my vendors is telling me they're doing quite nicely, thank you, but I as the customer don't feel that I'm, I'm getting the results I need. So service integration and management is about trying to align, govern and, and codify those activities that you want suppliers to take, you want your service integrator to take, so a body that coordinates those suppliers and what you expect your retained organisation, the customer itself, to do. That, that's perfectly clear and straightforward. Um, I think the challenge always is that you have, that's always defined in a kind of future state of, you know, that sounds perfect. <laughs> um, but, the, and presumably in many organisations, the reason for doing it is because it's not like that. Um, what, what are the kind of headline challenges that come up as that gets in the way of moving from the dysfunctional organisation to that sort of nirvana? So, number one, it's never a greenfield site. So you've always got, even if you're trying to do SIAM at the right time, so when you're looking at getting new service providers in to do some services, you're not going to be replacing all of the services at once. So you've got existing contracts, you've got existing suppliers, and you need to integrate them into your future state. And to do that, you often need to augment or revisit the contracts that you have. You need to augment the processes that you have to make them work in a much more integrated multi-supplier way. And you need to revisit well, you're reporting your management and your governance of those suppliers. So it's aligning new contracts with old, and it's aligning new ways of working with old ways of working. And what about the people side of it in terms of, you know, how do you assess whether or not, or not do you find organisations have the right kind of skill sets to, to do that change? Well, I think that's, I mean, I think that's where people like me come in, in that while I strongly believe that at the end of the day, service integration and management should be done by you, the company. Um, you need the assistance and the skills of external providers to, to take you on that journey, um, to change the way your staff think and work, to augment their capabilities, and to transfer your knowledge to them. So eventually you do end up with a position where there will be a transitory period. You know, our contracts are normally, say, five years, and during those five years, we would be attempting to transfer more and more operational functionality capabilities, <coughs> capabilities into that customer because it's not in our interest to run Siam for you in the long term. Well, I mean, in terms of the long term then, I mean, because we should be thinking about changing the way that organisations are and sort of people, you know, the, the, how, do, how do we get those skills in an organisation as part of their IT or technology or whatever you want to call it. I mean, is that something that's realistic to, to say that rather than having to bring, you might bring people in short term, but five years is still a long time. It is. Um, and to say, well, you know, what would be the key things that would make a difference so that an IT organisation does have or does understand that it needs to have those skills? Well, I mean, I think we're seeing this across mm. IT service management anyway. It's about the fact that process people, service management people, are no longer, their prime focus perhaps is not to be technical, it's those interpersonal skills, it's those soft skills, it's those other areas that they need to enhance and reinforce. So we probably are looking at recruiting or up upskilling current staff with, with, with skills that 
weren't traditionally associated with being a service management professional. You know, once upon a time a change manager's job was to stop changes to production. That is no longer true. So, yeah, I, it's obviously there are frameworks. <laughs> if I could think of one, I'd tell you. Um, no, it's, it, it is about getting those extra skills, those soft skills in place broadening the capabilities of your of your workforce. And, and finally, I suppose, I mean, the question would be, is SIAM something that's a thing that will be around in five years' time? Or, or, or is it just about good management, good governance, good organisational change? I mean, do we need to have SIAM? Well, I think it's much like just incident management. People always did incident, incident management before it was called incident management, and we will always have a need for incident management. There will always be a need for SIAM. It might not be the hot topic in, in five or ten years' time, but it will just hopefully become embedded as part of the end-to-end -end IT service delivery the, that we do, and there will be that coordination, cooperation, collaboration, assistance from a SIAM layer. I think we just hit bingo there. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Thanks very much, Mark. A pleasure. Just.